Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Mark Martin. President Trump has unveiled a $6 trillion tax cut plan that is already drawing fire from Democrats. Dale Hurd has the story. President Trump has begun the fight to deliver on one of his key campaign promises to cut taxes and reform the tax code. These tax cuts are significant. There's never been tax cuts like what we're talking about. The basics of the plan include cutting the number of tax rates for individuals from 7 to 3, 12, 25, and 35 percent, along with a surcharge for the very wealthy, cutting the tax rate for businesses from 35 to 20 percent, a number the president says he won't budge on, nearly doubling the standard exemption to $12,000 for singles and $24,000 for couples, meaning that money would be tax-free, keeping the deductions for charitable contributions and mortgages, but getting rid of the deductions for state and local taxes, a big hit for residents in high-tax states like New York and California, and eliminating the estate tax. Our framework includes our explicit commitment that tax reform will protect low-income and middle-income households, not the wealthy and well-connected. And it's not good for me, believe me. But predictably, Democrats disagreed, calling the plan a big windfall for the rich and a false promise to the middle class. It is a framework that gives away the store to the wealthiest while stocking the middle, sticking the middle class. Trump and Republicans say it's a once-in-a-generation opportunity. The president calls the current tax system a relic and a colossal barrier that's standing in the way of the nation's economic comeback. Tax reform would require bipartisan support on Capitol Hill. The president is trying to reach out across the aisle. Democrats and Republicans in Congress should come together, finally, to deliver this giant win for the American people and begin middle-class miracle. And some Democrats may go along, but a deal will be tough, and Republicans have many disagreements among themselves as well. Tax reform is going to make health care look like a uh, piece of cake. The president and congressional Republicans are hoping they can make the tax system much simpler for millions of Americans, meaning your own tax forms could be much easier to fill out. Dale Hurd, CBN News. The humanitarian crisis in Puerto Rico grows more dire by the day. Hurricane Maria slammed into the island one week ago, but millions of Americans there still have no power, no food or water, and no hope that help is coming. The supplies that many need most are not necessarily stuck on the U.S. mainland. Much of them are stranded in the country's main port due to a shortage of delivery vehicles. This is the single major, uh, biggest major catastrophe in the history of Puerto Rico. It's been hell. It's been absolute hell. Meanwhile, trailers full of supplies are still sitting on hold in the U.S., unable to be shipped to Puerto Rico because of a law that forbids foreign ships from transporting goods from one point in the U.S. to another. A waiver was granted to keep this from being an issue for areas affected by Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. President Trump is considering that as an option for Puerto Rico as well. This week, the House Republican leaders announced plans to bring a bill to the floor that bans abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy. Abigail Robertson brings us more from Washington. There are currently seven countries in the world that allow for abortion after five months of pregnancy, including America, North Korea, and China. Pro-life lawmakers hope to take America out of that group through the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act. Why is it so important to you to bring this bill to the floor, and what is the significance of the five-month limit? Well, what you find with five months is babies can feel pain. They have a heartbeat, they, their ears, their nose, their eyes. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy announced plans for the vote alongside five-year-old Micah Pickering, a healthy boy born at just 20 weeks. You see it after survey after survey, it's 64% of Americans support this. Mm -hmm. To go in and have an abortion after this amount of time, the baby feels that pain. Mm -hmm. That baby can live and we want to protect them. The bill first passed the House in 2015, but failed in the Senate. 
pro-life advocates hope to gain bipartisan support to help reach the 60-vote threshold in the Senate, given strong public opinion against abortions after five months of pregnancy. Susan B. Anthony List President Marjorie Dannenfelser tells CBN News senators need to think how their votes could affect the outcome of their 2018 campaigns. We um, have in most of those states already people going door to door to say, do you know that your senator voted against this bill last time around? Does that affect your vote in the 2018 election? So in other words, this is all connected. This vote is completely connected to what happens in the next election. President Trump promises that if the bill makes it to his desk, he will sign it into law. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. We take you to the front lines of the battle against ISIS. Meet the band of brothers who are saving lives one person at a time. Welcome back. The long battle to recapture Mosul from the deadly terrorists of ISIS is over. And throughout that bloody fight, one ministry put itself on the front lines to provide medical relief, humanitarian aid, and the gospel. As Chris Mitchell reports, one brave rescue by this ministry captured the hearts of millions. It's a sprint between life and death that's gone viral. 12 seconds that showed true sacrifice to a world searching for hope, now seen and shared by millions. Dave Eubank of the Free Burma Rangers told CBN News why he risked his own life to save the six-year-old Iraqi girl. For love, I'd want someone to save my kid. And I think whenever you're terrified, you should first ask, am I supposed to do this? Ask God that, not yourself. Ask God. And if he says do it, then ask for love. Because when you're really scared, you need love. And when you have love, you'll do anything for anyone. So love is what makes you really brave. And God gave me enough of that. <laughs> to run across, grab the girl. And that's not the only heroic shown by Eubank and his team. We're here to rescue, try to rescue this little girl. We're in ISIS territory, surrounded by them. Lord Jesus, help us, help us get her out. In Jesus' name, amen. She made it too. Okay, you're gonna be okay. God bless you, in Jesus' name. She's alive. Jesus, you saved me. I wanna be with you, helping others. And that's what the Free Burma Rangers is about. Eubank started his front lines ministry 20 years ago in Burma. Three years ago, they answered the call to come to Iraq, Syria, and Kurdistan. Our mission is to give help, mostly that's medical help, and hope, reminding people they're not forgotten, and love, saying that we love you, and even if you have nothing left, we're with you, and God loves you. And you can call on his name. God sent Jesus to save us, and you can call on him anytime. His team showed that love to the people of Mosul and the Iraqi army during the fight to free the city from ISIS. As Islamic State fighters fired at people trying to escape, the Free Burma Rangers rushed into the killing zone. Eubank tried to save this wounded Muslim woman, but she died. Yet in the midst of this carnage, Eubank's wife Karen and their three children bring fun, games, and the gospel. Karen explains it began back in Burma to help neighbors in trouble. It was very natural to go to people that you knew, churches that you knew, villages that you knew, and then as those villages were in conflict, it was still natural because you want to help people that you love. And so we would stay with the families there. And as things were intense and fighting increased on the front line, we would still stay with the family. Now their children say it's natural to help the people of Iraq. Well, we wouldn't be there if it wasn't for God. And we feel very blessed to have this opportunity and that he's put us in there. Not many people get to go to Mosul and get to help there in that area. And so we feel very blessed to be there. I mean, of course, there's always the danger of being shot. And so we also feel blessed that he's protected us through all of this and that we're all still alive. I call them the epitome of high-risk mission work because they're, they're the tip of the spear. Uh, providing medical treatment, hope, love, praying with people, bearing their burdens, and, uh, and it's all, it's, it's a loving sacrifice. It's a great example as far as being a light in a, in a very dark place. CBN News joined Eubank on the front lines and found a man of constant prayer. We can't take care of everybody, mm -hmm. but you can take care of the person in front of you. Yeah, and are these some of the kids that you're trying Hello. to take care of? Yes, they've been out here three days, yeah. and we have food, but it's the same thing every day. It's all we got, and some water. 
So I'm going to pray real quick. Yeah, let's do Lord it. Jesus, help these people mm -hmm. go to a safe place and a good place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember that little Iraqi girl that Dave saved? The team found a Superbook video for her to watch, a gospel tool Karen finds invaluable. One other thing that I've really loved uh, is being able to give kids exciting stories, and Superbook has been a big blessing in my ministry, as with kids there. It says in that indigenous language things that I can't say in full, and the beautiful animation goes a long way in places where there is no media. So. Thank you, Superbook team, for letting us share that in very restricted foreign areas. We've been able to show Superbook in Korean language, in Burmese, in Arabic, to frontline communities. And that's a bit of encouragement as well as normal life. We get to watch a video and we get to watch fun stories of God's faithfulness. So Superbook is a big blessing. Now on a speaking tour in the States, Eubank brings a message back to America. Without emails that said, be bold, without words from scripture that people just woke up in the middle of the night and felt they're supposed to give us, those came, all came back to me. A greater love hath no man than this, he laid down his life for his friends. This verse came to me at a time I wanted to be afraid and not do something. And thank you, church, for praying for us and, and everywhere you pray and do, it makes an eternal difference. Be kingdom focused. Where does God want me? How am I to pray? And know that the power of Jesus will defeat Satan. Chris Mitchell. Now we take you to Erbil, Iraq, where Chris Mitchell is on the ground covering the Kurdish referendum for independence and the fight against ISIS. Chris, you are in Erbil covering the Kurdish referendum for independence. How important is this for the Kurds and what impact could this have on the region? Uh, this referendum, especially for the Kurdish people, was very important. This was the first official referendum they ever had to have their uh, free and independent Kurdistan. Uh, for the region, it's going to have a big impact because the nations surrounding Kurdistan, uh, Turkey, Iran, Syria, and the Baghdad government, all opposed it. And so it could upset the delicate balance here in, uh, in the Middle East. And there are talks that it could be could lead to conflict between the Baghdad government and uh, in which they call the Kurdish regional government. So it's very important uh, for this region. You've also met with Christians in the area. What is their situation and what are they telling you about their future? The situation for Christians in this area remains desperate. Three years ago when ISIS came into this area, tens of thousands of Christians literally fled for their lives. Just the other day, we were at a church service in Ankawa, and there's a refugee camp there where literally thousands of Christians remained three years after ISIS came in and took over towns like Mosul, Karakosh, and Bartilla. So many of these, uh, these Christians, our brothers and sisters, they don't have a place to go back to their homes right now. Many times they can't immigrate to other countries, so they're really caught in the middle. Chris, you also followed Dave Eubank of the Free Burma Rangers to the front lines. Tell us what that experience was like. We've had the opportunity to be with him in Bashika, in Sinjar, and on the front lines uh, of the battle with ISIS. Uh, before I met Dave, somebody told me uh, he's, he's the guy that he's prayed more often than any other person they had met, and I found that to be true. Almost on a regular basis, Dave is going to say, uh, let's pray, and uh, he just prays whatever the situation might be throughout the day, and I'm sure that's why he's survived so long. He's right there in the front lines, as you've seen, that he's uh, rescued that six-year-old uh, Iraqi girl uh, in the middle, uh, right on the front lines with ISIS. He could have been killed, not only that time, but many other times. And because he prays, uh, that's why I believe he survived, and he spreads the good news of Jesus wherever he goes. Eubank talked about the power of prayer when he is on the front lines. How can Christians here at home pray for him and his team? It's really important, uh, I would say, for him to be able to pray, not only for Dave and his team, but for all the Christians in this, in this area that have been displaced because of ISIS, and pray for the situation here in the region. Uh, we talked to a Norwegian pastor the other day. He uh, cited Acts 17, where God sometimes redraws borders so that people would seek him. So it's very important to pray, not only for individuals like Dave and his team, uh, the Christians in the region, but for also the geopolitics that are going on. Prayer does make a difference uh, in the history of nations. Chris Mitchell, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Well, stay with us. Much more of CBN Newswatch is still ahead. New numbers show NFL ratings are down at least 10% in comparison to viewer numbers last year. 
The big question, are people tuning out because they are not supportive of the political messages the athletes who kneel during the national anthem are making? Well, joining me now to weigh in is Sean Brown. He is our CBN Sports Correspondent. Welcome, Sean. Hey, Mark. How are you, brother? Doing okay. Thanks for your time today. Well, first of all, do you think the protests are going to have a lasting impact on the NFL viewer numbers? Lasting impact? I'm not sure. Um, they will. They are having an impact right now, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but the question is, the answer is really twofold. One, being one from the perspective of the NFL and the players, and then two, the, the networks. Because from the players' perspective, um, at, at the end of the day, if this becomes a distraction, they have a, they have a choice to make. Are they going to focus on football and, and continue to play for that championship? Um, or are, is this gonna, are they going to allow this to continue to be a distraction if it becomes a distraction? I don't foresee that um, being a distraction. But from the TV perspective, from the networks, if they continue to lose money, then they, they may consider not even showing that part of the game like they used to. They, I mean, they recently just started showing that part of the game obviously because people were interested. But if they stop showing that part of the game, people will continue to, I believe people will begin to start watching again. Well, how should we as Christians respond to all of this? That's a good question. I can use myself as an example. Uh, my father is retired Navy. And this started a year ago, of course, with Colin Kaepernick, um, sitting and then first kneeling. When I saw that, I was upset because I grew up very patriotic. You know, I, my father fought in Desert Storm. I'm showing my age, but he fought in Desert Storm. I literally wore a medallion, a United States Navy medallion, for like six months until he, until he returned home. And so I'm very patriotic. And when I saw that, I was very upset. I was upset for about 20 minutes, but then I had to check myself because I was more upset over the fact that he was kneeling for the flag rather than why he was kneeling. And then it showed me that, you know what, I really need to take time to understand his perspective. You know, the Bible tells us in uh, Proverbs 2.6, it says, uh, the Lord, from the Lord, or the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. There's an equation there. You know, wisdom is the sum of knowledge plus understanding. And what we need to do, the Bible tells us also to be, you know, quick to listen, slow to speak, so that we can gain that understanding, so that we can respond with wisdom. And so I think it is very important for us as believers to, to not be quick to anger, to take time to really understand what's actually happening. Because I think that this has perhaps become somewhat of a smokescreen. Yes, it is important to stand for the flag. I firmly still believe that because that flag to me represents hope. But I would rather spend time thinking, why are these gentlemen, why are these men really protesting? Why are people protesting? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to them? And let me try to understand that. Well, even if we don't agree with the way they're making a statement, how can we get that knowledge? How can we educate ourselves to understand better what they're trying to do? Listen. The players have clearly stated this is not about the flag. This is not about, it is about social injustice in the country. And these are gladiators. Players, professional athletes, if they don't like something, they will tell you. If they are clearly saying this is not about this, it is about this, and they have stated this is about social injustice, it is, about, it is not about disrespect to the flag, we should probably try to listen. Whether, we whether or not we agree on the way that they're protesting, mm -hmm. because it, you know, it is a free country. Um, I, I, for one, I would be standing. I can't bring myself to kneel, but I'm not going to be mad at my brother because that is his own conviction and he has chosen to do it in that manner. Um, mm -hmm. And so as, us as believers, I do believe we need to try to understand what it is. Um, someone told me it's like a, 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 fake, a fake handoff. You know, the defense is chasing the guy without the ball, without the thing that really matters, while the quarterback still has the ball. We have yeah. to really try to get down to the, the, the nuts and bolts of why they are and deal with that issue. Okay. Sean Brown, our CBN Sports Director. Thank you so much for your time, Sean. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And we want to hear what you think. We have a poll on CBN News Facebook page, so be sure to check it out, and we'll be right back. Nearly 40 years after his death, movie star Steve McQueen is still often referred to as the King of Cool. And tonight, as life returns to the big screen, the documentary Steve McQueen, an American Idol, shares the rarely told story of how the King of Cool met the King of Kings. Ephraim Graham takes a look at the film with its producer, director, and McQueen's widow. I don't know where Steve had put his Bible, yeah. but um, he had just shared with Billy that uh, he, he wished he had a, had a Bible. And without any hesitation, Billy said, I'll give you mine. The man who led acting legend Steve McQueen to Christ, Steve, Leonard DeWitt, 
shares the story of McQueen's meeting with Billy Graham in this documentary, Steve McQueen, an American icon. It was a Bible that Billy clearly preached from because as I thumbed through it, I saw sermon outline verses he had underlined and it's such an amazing Bible to hold. Sharing Steve's salvation story on film has been a year-long passion project for its producer, Pastor Greg Laurie. He was a unique individual and now we call him the king of cool. And I think the coolest thing he ever did was be man enough to admit he needed God. That was cool in my book. They were in the air and they talked about God. The film follows McQueen's faith journey and even includes unheard personal audio recordings he made just weeks before dying. Some of them I was sitting there, but uh, but some of it's been so long ago. No, I don't. This is the part of the movie that I have to walk out on because it just brings back way too many bad memories for me. But it's uh, I think it's such an important part to the movie and it's Steve's words. I mean, it's right out of his mouth. The movie is an emotional journey for Steve's widow, Barbara you know Minty what? McQueen. We were gonna move and build our home in Idaho. I had the branch and I finally built a home on there. I wanted a family and I wanted a real life and I wanted to grow old in a rocking chair. We had our rocking chairs picked out and, mm -hmm. and just, oh boy, I'm gonna start bawling. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're fine. Um, it was, it was, I wanted a life with him. This is her chance to share that softer side of the Hollywood bad boy's life with the rest of the world. One film at a time. John Irwin directs the film. The cancer um, came on very suddenly. You know, it, I mean, obviously it had been building up, but he discovered it and he was only given months to live. This was about six months after he came to Christ. And so everything was about trying to fight this cancer. And it was a battle that he unfortunately lost. But in this final interview, you hear him claim his faith. You hear him, um, you hear the conviction in his voice. And uh, again, it's just, it kind of blows my mind that the, the biggest movie star in the world of the time, taking the spiritual journey and coming to faith, you know, how has this not been done and done again? And as a filmmaker, that's a very special thing to unearth an untold story about an American icon. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, New York. The film is in theaters tonight, and because of the high demand for tickets, it will return to cinemas nationwide for encore screenings October 10th and 19th. Well, that's it for now on CBN Newswatch. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.